Well, I did it. I finally sailed on a Norwegian cruise ship. One of my first cruises to Alaska. Just got off of the Norwegian Encore two days ago. And now I'm here to tell you all about my cruise experience on board the ship. And there were some things on the ship that actually shocked me. I've been on 24 cruises so far. And there were some things that we definitely need to talk about that I need to highlight because things got a little bit weird. Hello everyone, my name is Zach. I am the Traveling Man. And this is my brutally honest review of the Norwegian Encore. Well, after 23 cruises, I finally took my first cruise on Norwegian Cruise Line, and I was so excited about this cruise, and I chose this particular cruise on board Norwegian Encore for a couple of reasons. The first of which being what I stated at the beginning. I had never been on Norwegian Cruise Line despite being on 23 cruises with most of the major North American cruise lines. The second reason was that this itinerary was going to Alaska, and it was going to be my first time sailing to Alaska, and I specifically picked the Norwegian Encore among all the other options because in the summertime all the cruise lines send their ships up to Alaska. However, the Norwegian Encore is one of the few cruise ships that's allowed to sail inside of Glacier Bay National Park. And this itinerary also included stops in Juneau and Skagway and Ketchikan. So I knew that this was the one. They actually had a sailing on Norwegian Bliss the same week, but the itinerary wasn't as good. So I chose this one specifically to get on a Norwegian ship to get to Glacier Bay and then thirdly, to try one of their studio rooms. I know that Norwegian is well known for their studio rooms, and these studio rooms are exclusively for solo guests such as myself. On most all my cruises, I sell solo, and a lot of you that already watch my channel have asked me for over a year now, will you sell in one of the solo rooms on Norwegian? I'm curious about it. So this cruise on Norwegian Encore checked a lot of boxes for me. However, I was very curious of how the cruising experience on Norwegian was going to be. In the weeks and the months preceding my cruise, I received a lot of messages from folks and I had seen a lot of cruise news and heard a lot of podcasts and things and folks were like, man, things are really changing on Norwegian. Things aren't like they used to be. Some people were telling me to beware of the food, that the food had changed and it was awful on Norwegian. I was just hearing all these horror stories and I didn't know what to expect. But uh, yeah, I, I found some really shocking things when I sailed Norwegian. So this cruise review video, I'm going to tell you about all those things. I'm going to talk all about my cruise experience on Norwegian Encore. And how I do a cruise review is through my five steps process. And I do this just as a baseline, just so everyone, every ship I go on, gets equal footing, gets an equal review. And in that steps, the S stands for ship, of course, and we'll talk all about the ship, what I thought of the Norwegian Encore, and how things were handled on board by the crew. The T is for taste, and we'll talk all about the food. And I will mention this will be a very abbreviated talk about the food. I will also do a complete dining review. I was able to dine at five of the seven specialty restaurants on board, so in that full food review video, which is forthcoming, I will tell you about all the meals I had on board. But in today's video for taste, we'll just sort of talk about some of the basics of the food on board. And uh, yeah, we have some things to discuss for food. The E is for entertainment, the shocking entertainment on board the ship. And the P is for ports. We'll talk all about Alaska and the Alaskan ports we visited this cruise. And then the fifth part of my steps review is service. We'll talk about the crew and the service that I received or didn't receive on board the Norwegian Encore. So let's jump right into it. We're going to start today with the S. The S is for ship, the Norwegian Encore. And I will say the Norwegian Encore is a beautiful ship. When I first saw her, when I got to the pier the morning of my cruise, she's a huge ship. She's actually the largest ship in Norwegian's fleet, despite being the second newest ship. The Norwegian Prima is a little bit smaller than the Encore. She actually debuted back in 2019 at kind of an odd time because she debuted in December of 2019. And well, we know what happened just a couple months later when the cruising shut down and remained shut down for 15 months. So she's still fairly new, but she was a beautiful ship. From the moment I stepped on board the Encore and saw some of the furnishings and I got to the first elevator bank and saw the carpet and the light fixtures and went to the Encore Theater and saw the box office, I was like, wow, this is a really cool ship. It's a clean, very modern aesthetic. You can tell that so much thought went into the design of this ship and it was a fantastic ship. It's a huge ship. The ship holds at, I think, double occupancy, just north of 4,000 guests. And I had heard rumors from some of the crew that I passed that there were north of 4,500 on this cruise. So that's a lot of people this ship holds in its 19 decks. One of my favorite areas on the ship ended up being the waterfront. The waterfront is a sort of an overhanging deck on deck eight. It hangs out over both sides of the ship. 
And this is where you're gonna find some of the outdoor dining. Most of the specialty dining restaurants on board the Encore have a little outdoor seating area outside and it's there on the waterfront. But it's also a great place to walk. I went out there uh, just about every day while we were at sea or some days when we were in port even and just walked. Now it doesn't go all the way around the ship, but it does go from the forward on one side of the ship all the way around, wraps around the back of the ship and all the way up to the forward on the other side of the ship. So it was nice to just do laps back and forth like that. Not a lot of people out there, which surprised me. I thought by the end of the cruise, you know, a lot of people would have found out about it and be out there observing. I was in an interior cabin, of course, in my studio room. So this is the place I could go. I could come down from deck 12, be right there on deck eight, walk outside and have fantastic views of the port we were in that day. So I really love the waterfront. Another part of the ship that I really enjoyed was Ocean Place 678. And this is deck six, seven, and eight. These are the main public areas or guest areas on the ship. This is where you're gonna find most of the specialty dining restaurants. It's where you're gonna find the Encore Theater, the main atrium of the ship, guest services, et cetera, et cetera. Essentially, if it's a, a public area you wanna be, it's probably gonna be found on deck six, seven, or eight there on Ocean Place. Ocean Place pretty much extends from forward to aft on all three of those decks. There's a lot of things there on the ship. Now I mentioned I was staying in the studio this cruise, and again, those studio rooms are specifically made and designed with solo cruisers in mind. Each room is only about 100 square foot, and well, it's only made for one passenger. There's like one full size bed, there's some closets in there, there's a shower in one corner, a, a toilet in the other, and the bed's in the opposite corner. So I really enjoyed the room, and I'm gonna do a full uh, room tour of that. I'm gonna give my official review of that room, and also show you the studio lounge in a forthcoming video. One of the only complaints that I had about my studio stateroom was that it got a bit warm in there sometimes. It was an interior room, and the first day of the cruise, or the first evening rather, I noticed it was just warm in there. And you gotta know that the shower's like over there in the corner. So I think sometimes you take a warm shower and that's just trapping all of that, you know, warm, moist air inside of that cabin and heating it up. So I didn't really like that. I like a cool cabin. I think this was my first time ever in an interior stateroom. So I'm used to being able to open the door, get some cool air or whatever, but this is definitely the warmest I can remember being on a cruise ship. That was like the only negative thing I could say about those studio rooms. They were fantastic. So if you're on the fence, maybe about booking one of those, I highly recommend it. Another area of the ship that I really found myself enjoying was the observation lounge. It was actually the first place I went when I boarded the ship that day there in Seattle. Went all the way up to deck 15 forward to the observation lounge, a beautiful lounge. It's got plenty of seating, floor to ceiling windows in there where you can look out over Alaska. It was great to go in there some days when we were arriving in port. They also had snacks in there various times of the day. They had coffee and juices. It was a good place to go in the morning. Uh, when all the other venues were crowded on the ship and get a cup of coffee and just sit and enjoy the landscape. However, everyone found out about that observation lounge because it was packed in there. And I mean, just about any time of the day, after we got to maybe the second or third day of the cruise, it was like everyone found out about the observation lounge and there was no place to sit. And you talk about chair hogs. I know a lot of people talk about chair hogs out on the Lido deck. Well, keep in mind that we were sailing in Alaska, so that wasn't a concern because there weren't that many people out on Lido laying out in the sun because there really wasn't that much sun on this cruise anyways, but they were in the observation lounge and they were taking their towels and laying them across the loungers and laying them across the couches to reserve their seat for the day, which I thought extremely disrespectful. And actually one of the days of our cruise, we sailed Glacier Bay National Park and the ship didn't actually dock anywhere. We, it was sort of like scenic cruising. We just sailed around Glacier Bay all day and got to see the beautiful glaciers. And that day, it was horrendous in the observation lounge. There were whole families that were just saving uh, entire seats and sections of the observation lounge. I went in and saw some people had brought every belonging in their stateroom and reserved probably no less than 10 or 15 chairs and couches there in one area of the ship, while the rest of the family, I guess, slept comfortably in their cabins. And still focusing on the ship itself uh, and talking about things that are unacceptable, Norwegian is not capable of managing people. I did learn that from day one on board the ship. I actually learned it before day one on the ship and it all started uh, with the snag I hit on day one with the reservations. A lot of the reservations for like some of the comedy shows and some of the entertainment it just wasn't available to be made prior to the cruise. The only reservation I could make for entertainment prior to the cruise was Choir of Man. Choir of Man is the big show that you definitely want to see if it's offered on a Norwegian cruise. They actually had that two nights throughout the cruise. I made that reservation. It opened up three weeks before the cruising date. I got on board and realized there's comedy shows. And in order to go to the comedy shows, unlike all the other cruise lines on Norwegian, you have to have a reservation. Or if you don't get a reservation, you have to stand in a standby line. I didn't like that because it's like, well, I have specialty dining plans and I can't get in line early enough to, to guarantee that I get in the show. So once you get on board the ship on boarding day, you either need to go to one of the screen kiosks that they have around the ship, 
you either need to get on your Norwegian app and make those reservations, or they do actually have, they open up the social club, which is where they actually have the comedy each day, and you can stand in line in there, and they can make your reservations for you. And that's what I did. I went in there, waited in line for like 25 minutes, and by the time I got to the front, they were like, sorry, all the reservations are gone. You could have used your app to do it, though. But therein lies the problem because once i boarded the ship i tried in earnest for like 20 or 25 minutes to log into the app it didn't even recognize me as a guest on the cruise same thing with the internet it took me forever despite having the premium plus highest package streaming internet whatever it's called i could not access the internet when i boarded the ship and it was actually after like 12 p.m before the internet finally let me on and the app started working and by that time I had already waited in that line for the shows and found out that all the comedy reservations were gone. Similar story with some of the food reservations on board as well. I had heard horror stories that people had booked dining prior to the cruise and somehow their dining reservations got canceled on them. And when they got on board the ship, th their time and preferred dining location was no longer available. So that was my first indication that maybe Norwegian's not the best at managing a crowd of 4,500 passengers on one of their mega ships. So, that concerned me a little bit. And speaking of the app, it was just generally terrible the entire cruise. I finally got logged in on day one, and then by that evening it logged me out again. I had to go in and, and log in again. It didn't recognize me. I had to put in all my booking details. I had to do that at least four times throughout the course of the cruise. I mean, we were in the middle of the cruise, and this app was still kicking me out. So uh, the technology was not there for Norwegian. They just don't have it together from their food reservations and their website, that was very glitchy trying to make those. The app on board the ship was just awful. So I really feel like Norwegian needs to work on their technology on board their ships. Their ship is beautiful. It's very clean and modern. I loved it. But their technology, specifically their mobile application, really negatively affected the experience for me. And then things only got worse throughout the course of the cruise. The second instance of them not being able to manage crowds that well comes at our first port stop of Juno. And on that day, I actually had booked two excursions, which Norwegian had recommended because we had plenty of time in port. My first excursion was going to be to ride the Gold Belt Tram. And the tram actually goes way up the mountain and then overlooks the port of Juno, has fantastic views. So I got off the ship and noticed that everyone had gotten off the ship at the same time. And the buses, the complimentary shuttles, because at Juno, the ship ports away from the downtown area and you either have to walk the mile or take a shuttle the mile. And the line for the shuttle was, I don't know, it had to be at least 30 or 45 minutes long. So I asked one of the shore excursions crew that was nearby. I was like, hey, I have this tram excursion and then I have a, the Mendenhall Glacier excursion later. What do I do? And he's like, well, you're not going to make a, a shuttle in time. You need to walk and get there quickly. So I walk the mile over to the tram, get to the tram. I actually waited in line for about 50 minutes. And then I got to noticing, oh, I'm getting close to the time I have to meet for the Mendenhall Glacier. So I jumped on one of the shuttles downtown, hurried back to the ship, made it just in time to get on the glacier shuttle, and ended up missing my tram ride at Juno, which was kind of disappointing. Now, the shore excursion team did understand because this happened to a lot of people. A lot of people had to cancel the tram because it was just so slow. So um, I just feel like the overcrowding bus situation there really inhibited a lot of people getting to the tram on time to ride it and, and be there early enough to get ahead of the line so that they could then go on their second excursion. I do have a third example of crowding and NCL's inability to manage crowds on board their ship and this comes on disembarkation day. And disembarkation day I did what I always do which is self-assist which means I was carrying my luggage off the ship and I could basically leave the ship anytime I wanted to because I wasn't waiting on luggage outside the ship. So I left my room on deck 12 to get off the ship. I go to the elevator bank wait for probably 10 or 15 minutes on an elevator and just notice that elevators were coming down. They were just passing our floor. They were not stopping. And it's like, what's going on here? And I would have walked down the stairs, but I had been downstairs earlier and noticed that Norwegian had like closed the stairwells there on the deck seven where we were disembarking. They were not allowing people to take the stairwells down to deck seven because they were trying to control through elevator traffic, how many people were on deck seven and elevators were not stopping on our floor. I had to get in the elevator and actually go up all the way to, I think like deck 18 and then slowly make my way down, stopping at just about every floor until I made it to deck seven. And then I'm gonna put in a clip here of what deck seven looked like. Folks, it was a major line. I was in the very front of the ship and there was a line extending from the very front of the ship all the way to the back of the ship, through the casino, to the Manhattan room and the aft of deck seven. It took me 55 minutes 
to disembark the Norwegian Encore. And several of the crew that were standing there was like, oh, we're so sorry, it's never like this. It's never like this. Which I found out from other people who'd sailed Norwegian before that it absolutely is. Norwegian frequently does this on their ships. And sometimes it takes 55 minutes to disembark their ship. I was waiting in line. I was sweating in line because I had a flight booked and I was like, I'm gonna be, who knows how long I'm gonna be in this line. Thankfully, I made my flight on time, but that was a horrendous experience. So folks, I was prepared to give the Norwegian Encore a glowing review, but after some of these crowd management issues, uh, I had to tweak that a bit. So my overall rating for the Norwegian Encore is a 3.5 out of a five. Next up is the tea for taste and we're gonna talk about the food and like I said, I was a little bit worried because I had so many people telling me that the food is not great on Norwegian. Y'all, I was pleasantly surprised by the food on Norwegian. I feel like overall, the food was excellent on board the Norwegian Encore. I ate so much good food on board the ship from the main dining room to the specialty restaurants to desserts I got in like the observation lounge. Everything was so good and I really, for the most part, enjoyed the food on board the ship. And like I mentioned earlier, there's so many dining venues on board the Norwegian Encore. There's something like seven specialty dining restaurants and three main dining rooms. There is the Garden Cafe, which is the main buffet on board. And then there's the observation lounge where you can get snacks various times throughout the day. So, so much food to be had on board the Norwegian Encore and most of the food was good. And in fact, the main dining room on board the ship was quite good. I did eat there two nights for dinner and then I think two or three times for lunch. They had lunch just about every day in the main dining room. And one of those lunches, the first sea day on the ship, I went there and they actually had barbecue ribs. And whoa, for a cruise ship to have barbecue, first of all, it's usually just not good. I've had a lot of barbecue on cruise ships, a lot of attempts at barbecue on cruise ships, but this was in the main dining room. These were like pork ribs. Y'all, they were delicious. I was just astounded at how great that lunch was. And I actually think it was the best lunch I've had in any main dining room on any cruise ship, on any cruise line, that lunch I had there that day. So really good food in the main dining room. There were a couple of things that I had in the main dining room for dinner that I didn't particularly care for, wasn't that great. And I'll talk more about that in my food review video that I mentioned is forthcoming. And then I ate five nights in specialty dining and I wanted to try everything. I think the Norwegian Encore had more dining options than any cruise ship I've ever been on. Seven specialty dining restaurants is just unheard of on most cruise ships, but I took advantage of five of those. The first one I went to was Le Bistro and I didn't really care for it. It just, the quality of the food wasn't specialty dining quality to me. The second one I went to was Cagney's, which is a steakhouse and it's a typical steakhouse like most cruise ships have. And again, it was good, but it wasn't like, oh wow, that was worth that specialty dining credit that I just used. The third was Ocean Blue, uh, which was pretty good. I had a pretty good experience in Ocean Blue, but y'all, the last two specialty dining venues that I went to blew everything out of the water because the first was Los Lobos, which is the Mexican restaurant on board. Had one of the best meals that I probably ever had on a cruise ship there in Los Lobos. The Mexican food, it was just so good. It was so flavorful. It was like, think about the best Mexican restaurant you've ever been to in your life then put that on a cruise ship. That's Los Lobos. I was just excited that they even had a Mexican restaurant on board a cruise ship because you normally don't see that on a cruise ship, but they have it on the Norwegian Encore and I absolutely loved it. The next night I went to Q Smokehouse and again, barbecue on a cruise ship. It's been done and done time and time again and it's never been done well. And I know good barbecue y'all. You can probably tell from the way I talk that I've lived in parts of the country. They have a really good barbecue and they had really good barbecue in Q Smokehouse. And I'll show you some of the clips of some of the food I had in there. That Pitmaster's platter that they have in there, oh, it was just tremendous. It was like four different types of meat, all different kinds of sides. My server in there was absolutely tremendous. Probably the best service I had the entire cruise. So I really enjoyed my experiences in both Los Lobos and Q Smokehouse. One of the other venues that I enjoyed on board the ship was the local. The local is the 24 hour eatery that they have on board the ship. Now. The idea with the local, of course, as the name suggests, is that it's like a local eatery. It's like your little local breakfast place. And you can go there 24 hours a day. They have breakfast in the mornings. And then in the afternoons, they have wings and sandwiches and burgers and salads, just all sorts of dining available at the local. That was the first place I ate when I boarded the Norwegian Encore. I was so excited to try it because I had looked at the menu online before the cruise. Just excited that the ship had a 24 seven eatery because you don't get that on a lot of cruise lines. And the food overall was really good in the local. The service could be very slow at times and sometimes you'd have to wait for a table, but the food itself was tremendous. Speaking of the main buffet, this is one area, uh, this will probably, could probably fall in under the ship 
category of two, there's not enough seating in that Gardner Cafe at all. It's a pretty large buffet area, and of course, like I said, 4,500 people on a ship. I saw people constantly carrying food out, big plates of food, because they couldn't find a table. And honestly, I never ate in the Gardner Cafe after breakfast time, because you go in there at lunch or dinner, there's no tables to be found. They were actually pushing people to go to the Gardner Cafe some nights. They were having like prime rib the first night, and they actually had some of the crew holding up signs saying, you know, uh, prime rib and shrimp on the buffet tonight and they were trying to get people to go up there and eat some night they had like steak and shrimp and they again had signs around the ship like go eat at the garden cafe tonight and that's all because they do freestyle dining on norwegian that's norwegian's big thing is freestyle cruising and y'all let me know down in the comments what does freestyle cruising even mean because other than the dining which i'm about to talk about i never saw anything freestyle that was different from other cruise lines so i'm still confused about the concept of you know freestyle cruising Freestyle dining I get because Norwegian's freestyle dining means that you can go to any of the three main dining rooms on board the ship at any time you want to. It's basically anytime dining or select dining, whatever the other cruise lines call it, which means that you can show up at the main dining room at 8 p.m. You might have to wait a little bit, but you don't have to be assigned dining. There are no assigned dining times at all on board Norwegian Encore or any of the Norwegian ships to my understanding. So that's the only place I saw the freestyle cruising. It also means that there are very little in the way of dress codes. So if you're someone who's offended by someone wearing shorts or a Harley Davidson hoodie or a ball cap, things like that inside the main dining room, some of the specialty restaurants too, don't sell with Norwegian because it's all the freestyle dining. They basically let you wear whatever you want to to eat and they basically let you eat in any of the main dining rooms whatever time you want to. The food was good on Norwegian Encore. Like I said, other than those couple of specialty dining instances that could have been better, I thought the food was tremendous. And so I'm going to give the food on board Norwegian Encore a solid four out of a five rating. So now we're going to move from the food, which is really good, to something that wasn't that great, which is the E for entertainment. And I was shocked at the entertainment on board Norwegian Encore. There wasn't that much of it. There was only one main show the entire cruise, and that was the Choir of Man. And Choir of Man is a show, I know it's been on the West End, it's been on Broadway, so it's big on and off the cruise ship, but it's Norwegian's big show. It was a tremendous show. It's probably the best show I've ever seen on a cruise ship, to be honest with you. And like I said, I made my reservations for that three weeks before the cruise. If you wait to get those reservations when you get on board the cruise ship, even if you are lucky enough that your app works and you can even make reservations when you board the cruise ship, hear me now. If you're going to be sailing with Norwegian Cruise Line, you want to make sure you get a seat at Choir of Man. It was such a good show. It was thoroughly entertaining. And the longest show, too, that I've ever seen. It was like an hour and 15 minutes long, which was major long. But they did such a good job at getting the crowd engaged. There was great interaction between the cast and the crowd. The cast did such a great job. Just a tremendous show. The entertainment on board pretty much ended there. They had Choir of Man the second night of the cruise and I think the next to last night of the cruise. And other than that, and the comedy shows that they had in the comedy lounge every night, there wasn't a lot of entertainment options on board the ship. If you're someone who likes to go to three or four stage shows, stage production shows throughout the course of a cruise, you're not gonna get that on Norwegian. Now they did have like an illusionist one night, they had a solo vocalist one night, they had things like that. But as far as stage shows go, there just wasn't a lot. They had a couple of bands performing around the ship some nights, but for the most part, music wasn't as present on Norwegian Encore as I've seen it on other cruise ships. And finally, one of the other things that I'm gonna throw into entertainment is the go-karts. Of course, they have the go-karts on the very back of the ship. The go-karts were often closed throughout the cruise because of rain. Of course, we're sailing in Alaska. It rains a lot there in the summer. And so for that reason, a lot of folks got their reservations canceled, including me. I think I had reservations for like the third or fourth day of the cruise, they got moved all the way to the last day of the cruise. So the last day of the cruise, I show up at my reservation time, I get in line, there are a lot of people in line. I thought, oh, it'll probably take 30 minutes. Y'all, it took 75 minutes. That's an hour and 15 minutes. That's also, coincidentally, the same amount of time as the Choir of Man show. I know there's a lot of people that want to ride go-karts. I know that they also sell an unlimited pass for like $199 for the cruise, but it's not worth waiting in that long of a line. It's an eight minute ride, you get eight minutes. It's about roughly seven laps around the track. Uh, and I did come in second, just so everyone knows that. Uh, but it took 75 minutes and I didn't like that. So for entertainment, for all the entertainment or lack thereof on board the Norwegian Encore, I am only given entertainment, and this is only because Choir of Man saved it a little bit because I would have given less. 
a 2.5 out of a five rating. And the next up is the P, the P is for ports. And what more can I say, y'all? We went to Alaska and I can say that Alaska surprised me because it was much more beautiful than I ever could have imagined. And I already can't wait to go back. I've already been looking at other cruises, you know, in next year and the year after, and maybe going to Alaska again because I really enjoyed it. So on this itinerary, we of course left from Seattle. The first day was a day at sea. The second day we arrived at Juneau and we arrived there at about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And I got to see the Mendenhall Glacier there, which was beautiful, and I really enjoyed that excursion. The next day, we were in Skagway. Skagway was my favorite of the entire cruise. I did two excursions that day, one of which was the Skagway Streetcar. Got a great tour of the downtown area, the tiny downtown area. Also got to go up the mountain a little bit and get great pictures of the valley down below. Then also did the famous White Rail Pass, which is what I think most people do in Skagway. That was a fantastic 40-plus mile train ride all the way up to 3,000 feet above sea level and then back down again. That was fantastic. We also went to Glacier Bay, which was a treat. I really enjoyed that. One of the reasons, again, why I picked this specific itinerary on Norwegian Encore. And then the next day we were down in Ketchikan. However, we were only in Ketchikan from like 7 to like 12.30 in the afternoon. It's only like five hours. And I didn't like that. The excursion I went on wasn't great. I booked it through the cruise line like I did all my excursions. This excursion in Ketchikan took us to Totem Bight State Park, which is only like a five minute bus ride from the port. And the town of Ketchikan is actually a seven mile bus ride from the port because they don't actually port in Ketchikan. They port in Ward Cove, which is sort of like a, I don't know if it's just Norwegian or other cruise lines, but it's basically the cruise line has built a terminal there and then they bus you all the way down to Ketchikan. And the excursion I was on when we were done, they took us back to the ship and not to downtown Ketchikan. So I didn't even get to see Ketchikan. And by the time I'd gotten back to the terminal, they said, oh, all the buses have stopped. All the shuttles have stopped down to Ketchikan because we're leaving soon. So I didn't like that. Didn't get to see a lot of Ketchikan. That was the major disappointment of the cruise. And then the next day we stopped for a four hour stop, very short stop in Victoria, Canada. And because this stop happened after 8 p.m., there really wasn't time to see much in Victoria either. This stop is sort of uh, something they just have to do. So it's just checking a box for them because of the Jones Act, which basically says a cruise can't start and end in the United States without visiting a foreign port. So that was our foreign port there for the cruise, we were just there for a few hours. So overall, it was a good itinerary. I will say it's a quick itinerary because you're hitting so many ports. So some of the days like Juneau, we didn't arrive until 2 p.m. and Ketchikan, we left at 1 p.m. and Victoria, we didn't arrive till 8 p.m. and left at midnight. So some of the ports are really, you know, quick. It's a quick uh, way to see the port. But if you're like me and you just like to get off the ship, do an excursion, be real quick and then get back on the ship, it's perfect. So. I really enjoyed the itinerary. I really enjoyed getting to see Alaska. However, I will say a warning to you here. If you do want to go to Alaska, do not go on a mega ship. Do not go on the Norwegian Encore or a ship of that size. Go find you a cruise line with a smaller ship and go on a smaller ship with maybe, you know, 2,000, 2,500 passengers or less. I think you'll have a better experience fewer lines, and more time to see the sights of Alaska. And I will say, if your excursion doesn't visit Glacier Bay, it's probably not the end of the world. It was cool to see a glacier or two on the trip. You can actually see the Mendenhall Glacier if you're going to Juneau. You can take an excursion over to see that. But being there just on the ship all day and just the ship would pull up to a glacier and then it would just do 360 turns for like an hour and then move to another glacier. You only get to see two or three glaciers when you're in Glacier Bay National Park. Uh, and it's only like a few hours that morning. The coolest part was they did bring some park rangers on board and they sort of narrated over the PA and told us what we were seeing. Uh, but if you've been there before, or maybe you feel like you could skip seeing two or three additional glaciers and just see a glacier somewhere else in Alaska, then Glacier Bay is probably not worth going on one cruise line or another just so you get to go there. So pick a small cruise line if you're going to Alaska. That's my recommendation to you. But for this cruise, the P for Ports gets a solid, a very good, 4.5 out of a five star rating. Y'all definitely need to go to Alaska. And finally, we make it to the S and the S is for service. We're gonna talk about the crew and disappointing experience on board the Norwegian Encore with the crew. For most of the crews, the service was not personable at all. And what I mean by that is, take for instance, in the main dining room at dinner, I would sit down, someone would come over, just give me a menu. We'll be back in a minute to take your order. Someone will come over and take my order. No one ever said, hey, good evening, I'm so-and-so. Most of the time, no one ever called me by my name and it was just not personable service. Sometimes with the crew, it felt like you were in imposition. You know, it felt like you were just ruining their day. And I really think 
the crew was just kind of stressed. Maybe they're overworked. Maybe they were just overtired or something, but it just didn't feel like quality service on board Norwegian Encore. And even sometimes when you were being waited on, it was just very rushed. It was like, here, let me throw this menu at you. I'll be back in a minute to get your order. They'd come over, all right, what do you want? They'd take it, then they'd be gone, and then you wouldn't see them again until they brought your entree or whatever. And in addition to the poor quality of service, the speed of the service was sometimes very off as well. So I don't know, it just seemed like something was off with the crew on board the Norwegian Encore. And I would put it up there with some of the worst service that I've had on board a cruise ship. So for these reasons, I'm only giving the service a three out of a five rating on board Norwegian Encore, and it needs quite a bit of work. So when we average up all the scores together, that gives my total rating of the Norwegian Encore a 3.5 out of a 5. And I will say it was a good cruise. I had a good time. I was actually, again, pleasantly surprised at how good the food was. I was pleasantly surprised at how the overall Norwegian cruise experience was. It was a good experience. I had a good time. I enjoyed seeing Alaska. But would I do it again? That's something people have already been asking me. Would you go on another one? If you follow me on Instagram, which I encourage you to do because I do live updates as the cruise is going on. I'm putting up pictures and I'm putting up stories and videos and I'm giving you some of my early thoughts. People said, you really seem to be enjoying it. And I did. I enjoyed the cruise. And I absolutely would go with Norwegian again. I um, am curious to see what some of their older ships are like, some of their smaller ships might be like. I don't think I would go Norwegian again to Alaska for the reasons I've already mentioned, but I definitely think I would sell, and I know that I will sell with Norwegian again. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, please go down below, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, maybe this is the first time you've ever watched one of my videos, I hope that you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure.